How's it going YouTube? Just making a quick video. I guess all my videos are really quick videos, but I've got here my 1.1 or male and a female um, spotted turtles. I've got them in this half vivarium. I've always wanted to keep a semi-aquatic species like this. You can see there to the left, I've got a little planted land area with uh, some pothos, a uh, bit of uh, jabili tree from Madagascar in there. I know the uh, plants aren't to this specific region of these animals, but they look really nice in the uh, planted part. I've even got a bit of uh, pine there, which um, can be very native to the eastern part of the United States where these little guys are from. There's a bougainvillea in there as well. You can't really see with the light drowning it out. Right now I'm just tossing in some mealworms. I'm gonna leave for a couple days, so I'm kind of super feeding them with mealworms. And um, I'll have an automatic feeder for the pellet that I'll drop onto this enclosure. Uh, but later we're gonna go to some video of me servicing the enclosure for a long weekend. So. Stay tuned, uh, you can see the male just coming uh, across the enclosure. He's to the right and the female there is to the left. She's a little antsy now because I've just introduced them. They've been together for about a week now. So I'm making sure they're nice and well fed and um, hopefully the male doesn't bother her too much in terms of nipping at her. Uh, normal courtship for these guys does include a bit of nipping so you do have to watch closely for any sort of breeding behavior that causes the female to um, aspirate, breathe in water, and then eventually end up drowning or developing some uh, respiratory issues. So you gotta watch them closely and make sure that the female can get out of the water as she's showing right now. I've got that bit of cork there actually blocking the, or covering the filtration so that it's not visible. Um, just because it can be a little unsightly. And it's actually allowing for some of the pothos here on the right side of the enclosure to um, to kind of have an anchor to grow on. Um, just to the left, I do have my little shrimp tank yonder. That's my ADA enclosure that, or sorry, aquarium, that I'm raising some crystal reds and some really shrimp in there. Yeah, so this is an enclosure. Uh, we'll cut off to a scene of um, me doing the water changes and whatnot on this enclosure. Thanks. Okay guys, we're back with a little bit of extra lighting. You can see Chip here up front and center. Uh, he's taking care of all the mealworms. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go over a little bit of what I do in terms of a water change for these guys. Now. The beneficial bacteria for this whole system will be housed in the in the surfaces of the tank. So, be it the um, wood furniture or the walls of the aquarium, or more specifically in the filter media. So I've just got a filter pad in there that I will rinse. I rinsed it last week, so I'm not going to be doing that this go ahead. But um, I'm just gonna do as much water change as possible. Beneficial bacteria does not live in the water column or it's very negligible. So what I'm gonna do is just replace as much of the water as possible. Give them nice crystal clear water. These guys thrive with really clean water. So what I'm gonna do is do that really quick. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. to mention before I started that um, I do turn off the filtration um, during this whole thing um, I don't want the filter to be running dry you can see a little fish swimming around in there that's a little rosy feeder that I put in a long time ago 
that uh, has survived this whole time. So um, I use Prime to dechlorinate my water and I use nice cool water. I don't want to, um, I don't want to stress the turtle with warm water. Um, this is a unheated tank, so the water's nice and chilly. Great for this temperate species. Um, and now I'll just be tossing water back in there. It's a little turbulent, but they do just fine. I try to put it at a pretty steady trickle so it doesn't splash too much. And you can see I just use a five gallon bucket. And I put it up to the soil level because there is a leak in the glass wall that separates the land, the dry dock, and the water. So I only go up to the soil level because that seems to be the point where water does not leak into the land part of the enclosure. So I'll eventually I'll clean off the glass, but for right now, I've got to remember to plug back in the filtration. That'll get going pretty much right away. There we go. So I'll lift this log up quickly. Sorry, the core part up quickly so you can see the filtration that's under there. So I've got it slanted so it's a trickle rather than a splash. That's just more for... Um, for me not having to listen to the splashing while I'm in the living room. Uh, and I did forget to mention that this uh, aquarium is in the living room. I've re removed the rim uh, off of this tank so it's a nice uh, rimless tank. Um, I do plan on upgrading, especially now with the two turtles in here. I'm thinking about actually upgrading the enclosure to be as long as this table here. That be that. And water change is done. Not routine, but maintenance for this enclosure would be to trim any of the plants in here. I've got a uh, Portulacaria afra. That's, oop, you can't see my finger. That's this plant right here that kind of fell over and was growing uh, lopsided. So you can see it's got a nice cool character to the tree. Uh, to the plant rather so i hope it survives in here um got bonsai soil in here so the plants are digging it they're liking it just fine uh, but here let's go back to the turtle that's the female right there that's doing a bit of swimming yeah so i really like the plants in this natural setup um, not too natural though of course i've got a bare bottom that i've painted black didn't really go into much of that in some of the enclosure videos to to, uh, to the spotted turtles, but thanks for watching. That's maintenance. That's water uh, change maintenance for these guys. I've got two UVB, sorry, three UVB lamps to promote basking. So I've got a, sorry about this shadow up here. You can see my hand. This is just extra lighting for the video, but I've got a UVB strip that I change every three or four months or so. And same with the bulbs. Got two bulbs there, a um, little kind of like a spot lamp. It doesn't give off too much heat, but just enough for the turtles to enjoy basking on that log and on that cork bark right there. So log, cork bark, they bask there. That there doesn't have a light, but the female will bask up there. That's kind of like the, uh, the honey no-no area. Whenever she wants to get away from the male, like she's looking to do right now, put her up there but thanks for watching um you don't get to see my ugly mug in this video just two beautiful little spotted turtles one of my favorite species my favorite species of turtle actually and hopefully they will breed for me one day they're an endangered species or protected in certain spots of the united states but make sure you buy captive bread promote the 
honest breeders out there by tiny little captive bred hatchlings and make sure you don't have any illegally caught adults because that does still happen. Um, major threats to the spotted turtle, the Clevis catata, is, um, you know, uh, people poaching them for the pet trade. So, um, and habitat destruction. Habitat destruction is a big thing. Um, in the wild, they do not sexually mature as quick because they do have those cold seasons where they do brumate, become dormant, so they're not doing a whole lot of growing. Whereas in captivity, in the, in, um, they tend to grow all year and all seasons. They do reach sexual maturity a lot earlier than some of those big females and males out in the wild. They do take a lot longer to mature to size. So thanks again for watching and thanks for listening to the conservation aspect of this video. I encourage you all to go out there and uh, find a species of reptile to work with that maybe not, maybe are not doing well in the wild or are not doing well in the hobby and some of these countries could shut down for importing someday. Um, the males being a little aggro right now, a little bit of the some behavior there. <laughs> So the females flipped. <laughs> I've actually never seen that before. So the female flipped there for a little bit, but he does do a bit of biting. Uh, I am watching them, monitoring, make sure he's not nipping her tail and, and feet, of course. Um, they do tend to get a little rough during courting, and I am watching out for any sort of behaviors like that. I'm actually going to be setting up an outdoor enclosure for her uh, where um, she can kind of get away from some of his antics here. Thanks very much again for watching. Sorry about the double ending and peace.